President Trump traveling to Florida today, kicking off his re-election campaign with me now, the former House Speaker, New Gingrich, Fox News contributor and author of Collusion. Sir, thank you for your time. Welcome back. Donald Trump Jr. wrote at foxnews.com describing 17 months of a mudslinging slog. Uh, how tough is this re-election? Well, I think it's tough, but I think when you've had 92 or 93 percent negative press coverage, the very fact that he's still standing is sort of a miracle. And, of course, part of that is that he has had a remarkable economy. People, I think, give him large credit for job creation and for wages going up. Uh, at the same time, he's met what he promised his conservative back people uh, he would do. He's, he's been very good on judges, very good on deregulation, very good on tax cuts. So he's going to have a fight. It's going to be very tough. But as Scott Rasmussen pointed out this morning, exactly on this date four years ago, uh, Donald Trump was at 1 percent, and 67 percent of the Republicans said they'd never vote for him. Hmm. Now, this is a great campaigner. Uh, I think that he believes he's going to win. He believes it's going to be a fight to the finish. Uh, but he also believes, I think, that the Democrats are pretty weak. And I'm inclined to agree with him. I think the Democrats could stumble into a disaster uh, if they're not careful. Well, that was June of 2015, what you just described in there from Rasmussen. Well, what do you make of all these hundreds of people camping out, sleeping out overnight? I mean, they're, they're, they're like, some of them look like Grateful Dead followers who, you know, get on the concert tour and go from one <laughs> rally to another. Not all of them, but a, a lot of them moving from town to town. D does that tell us much? Well, what it tells you is that this is a president with a very intense relationship with his base, that everywhere he goes, he turns out 20, 30, 40,000 people. Uh, I think they had 100,000 register, uh, and, and I can only get about 25,000 in the building. But I think 100,000 people registered for the kickoff. Uh, and I think that's because Trump, Trump is unique in that he was elected in the end by all the people who were mad at Washington, who wanted somebody with guts, who didn't mind if he had weaknesses as long as he was a fighter. And I think he's convinced him he is a fighter. He's also convinced him he, you know, he means what he says. He's really trying to control the border. He's really trying to get illegal immigration under control. He's really trying to do the right things to create jobs. So his base is very, very solid, amazingly solid. I know of no other president who could have gotten 92 percent negative press coverage uh, and still be standing. Oh. Orlando Sentinel, speaking of which, a moment ago endorses anyone but Trump. There's no point pretending we'd ever recommend readers vote for Trump. After two and a half years, we've seen enough to the point that you're just making there. 2012, Mitt Romney lost by less than 100,000 votes to Barack Obama. Florida's always close. Four years later, Donald Trump slightly more than 100,000 votes. He beat Hillary Clinton. Joe Biden from Monday on how he sees his campaign <clears throat> at the moment where he thinks he can win. Roll this. I plan on campaigning in the South. I plan, and if I'm your nominee, winning Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, believe it or not. And I believe we can win Texas and Florida, if you look at the polling data now. Oh. Seems to me Florida and Ohio are leaning Republican. Seems to me that those two states have leaned for Donald Trump. And it seems like the battle is really found in places like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. How do you see that 16, 17 months away? Well, look, I think it depends in part on who the Democrats nominate and what they stand for. Uh, I just saw a survey this morning about the Hyde Amendment, which blocks the government from spending taxpayers' money to pay for abortions. Uh, the, the country overwhelmingly favors keeping the Hyde Amendment. Every Democratic presidential candidate is going to be for repealing it. Uh, you go down item after item, the Democrats are going to run as a tax increase, left-wing values uh, party. <clears throat> if they're, and that's why I said earlier, if they're not careful, they can stumble into a George McGovern, Walter Mondale size disaster, because there's no reason to believe any of these early polls tell us anything that matters. And frankly, if Joe Biden thinks he's even competitive in South Carolina, he is about as out of touch with reality as it's possible to be in this business. Yeah. Debates start a week from tomorrow. They'll certainly be interesting. Sir, thank you for your analysis. 
Hope to bring you back Glad real soon. There's going to be a lot to talk about here, trying to figure out the shape of the country and where we've been and where we're going. Thank you, Newt Gingrich, for being with us today. Thank you.